Hello everybody. Welcome to Minecraft Maker. Minecraft Land Party. So this, I haven't shown you too much of this part of the Nether Hub. This portal goes out to Reclaim's place and then this goes out to Smash Smasher and Pete's place. Um, I dug a little thing out here because uh, I was running around looking for a nice, like a plains biome. Some place with a lot of open space. And I found it just north of... Uh, Smash Smasher and Pete's place. So I put a portal in. And it leads me out here. Hello. Um, things are still a little spawny out here. But I have a horse. Named Beauty. And uh, yeah. Look at this. Do you know what this is? I bet you do. It's the start of an iron farm. Yeah, because the one we got kind of sucks. So I've got uh, some a lot of space out here. I There was a small little hill here that I sort of took down and, and a little bit over here. But I didn't have to carve out too much. I'm using snow blocks here to mark out where it is, which is a little funny in the plains biome. Uh, but I need to, to mark out the distances because it's kind of, kind of critical. I'm using the... Uh, it's actually a very old uh, tutorial that Doc M77 put out. And basically, these represent the spawning cell areas for where the farm is going to be. I like this little structure here. I didn't want to tear it down. It looks like uh, abstract art. <laughs> anyway, um, and then horizontally, they're separated by 65 blocks. Vertically, they'll be separated by 62 blocks or 70 blocks from floor to floor. And then the whole thing, the bottom one is, I'm going to put it up, I think, three blocks in the air. <laughs> or three blocks, yeah, in the air. This is not part of the iron farm. If I climb up here, it should look familiar to you. I like the water sounds. It's a cactus farm. Uh, same design that I built in my single player world. Uh, I did a tutorial on that. I can link that in the in the notes. And it is uh, generating cactus because I'm going to make all of the golem transport with green glass. It kind of fits in with the uh, the grass. I think it'll be good. So I'm going to have towers of spawning areas. And the Doc M1 does it with two, right? One tower, two tower, and then the golems fall down and they get pushed into a central kill area where they are brought down to like a heart and a half of uh, health, which is about as far down as you can, you can bring them automatically. And then you can go in and kill them and get the, uh, get the XP and get the drops and all that. I'm going to build two additional towers. And I know this is going to work. So these two towers will route the golems along here. And about halfway around, pop. They will then push the golems towards the center. And the other side will do the same thing. And what I'm planning on doing is, I'll tear down this little house up there. I have it there for the time being. Um, just as a place to go hide out when it gets dark. But those stairs, I want to keep the stairs going down. And you walk down underground to get to the uh, the kill area. Sun's going down. Let's, And then I want to show you something over here real quick. And over here, I have a little structure. And you probably hear what's inside. Huh. Huh. Hi, I'm a villager. Please keep me safe in here. So, um, I have two villagers in here. I set up a, a zombie trap. And unlit this entire area. <coughs> Sorry, pardon me. Still got that cold. Uh, and then, uh, when I got some zombie villagers, I, I tracked them in and trapped them down and, and uh, gave them... Uh, you know, weakness potion, golden apple, cured them, the usual. 
Down here I've got another snow block. This actually marks how far away I need to move them to keep them from interfering with those villages there. Not exactly, not entirely true. Basically I need to move them. I'm going to build a village down here. And I have a plan in mind, but I have to refine it a little bit yet. And I'm probably going to fill in this little water pit because it's going to become a liability at some point. So I'm going to move them over there, over behind me a little bit. And then uh, set up a small village, start breeding them. So that when I start building my, my uh, golem spawning areas... I can then uh, steal villagers from there to populate the uh, the villager cells and uh, start building the get the iron farm up and running um, so I am making a couple differences from the the original design again I'm gonna have four towers I think we could actually get away with another set of towers but uh, trust me this will be enough and then uh well it'll yeah, yeah. so a lot of times in minecraft uh, people get bogged down with trying to do things as big and efficient as possible and there's a uh, certainly a place for efficiency but uh there's also a place for good enough and i've done some testing in a creative world and trust me four towers is going to be good enough and it's going to be kind of a constant stream of iron golems. So uh, certainly more than enough iron for what we need. If we had more people playing on the server with doing a lot of high iron demand projects, it might not be super useful. Oh, I brought ender pearls out. <laughs> I meant to drop them off, but um, so I'm still carrying them. That's fine. So, um, yeah, so in the next couple episodes, I'm going to be doing little sort of building tutorials on how I actually build the iron farm. There are some design elements that I think are not, uh, uh, yeah, hello. You gonna let me through this time? Oh, thank you. Um, there's some design elements that... Like, for instance, I think the the cells are spaced apart a little conservatively, but I think that was just so that if you got off by one, it wasn't a big deal. Um, have a little temporary mushroom farm going here. I realized I don't have a lot of mushrooms for making visibility potions and such. Oops, that's not what I wanted. Do this one. There we go. And yeah. So um let me show you the basic design though as by way of a preview. Hang on a second, I'll be right back. Hello, buddy. How are you? Yeah. Hi. How are you doing? Thank you for protecting these guys. Alright, so this is a little village that I built. The little potato farm. Oh, poisonous potato. Um, I'm glad they, they toss those. Very good. Um, I've got a, got a few villagers here. This is my creative world. Uh, I don't know. It's hard to count them, but, uh, I've got, uh, 50 doors here, so I could have, whoa. <laughs> okay. Very good. And, uh, I do have a couple, uh, village or farmer types this guy's actually a fisherman that's fine so he goes around and uh harvests the potatoes and feeds everybody so that they're willing to breed and that that willingness thing oh hi buddy this is the cutest thing in the world oh oh goodness and then um, I'm also working on how to get the villagers out of the village so that they don't, uh, they can't escape because that's kind of important and that things can't come in and get them. And that's also kind of important. So I came up with this uh, little system here where we use rails to go up and uh, put a block here. It blocks, it prevents them from hopping up and climbing out. 
and uh, this is elevated and is lit so nothing can spawn up here so nothing can climb in uh, they do take a little damage going through the block but it's it's not that big of a deal I don't think um, then I'm using just door arrays like this five by five set of doors this is actually I think what I'm gonna build for the village my sort of breeder village it's a hundred doors which will get me 35 villagers which is a good amount however it's also an amount that can cause zombie sieges and and I'm gonna be working on the farm sort of at night so I'm not gonna have a chance to get far enough away from the uh, the village I don't think to uh, prevent the zombie sieges from happening so I may only actually activate half the doors and then we'll see how that goes, whether or not I spend a lot of time waiting for the villagers to breed up. I, I don't know. Obviously need to keep at least two in the village to be able to make more villagers. But as you can see, come on, you can render. There we go. The farm is big. So I'm, oh, you just saw an iron golem drop there. So each of these villages they're going to be stacks of three that's one variation that i'm doing from doc's original design um he only has two but there is room to fit three if you don't build the first one too high up in the air and it works just fine the third one works beautifully so i'm going to do four sets of three so it's 12 villages all together and that's going to get my average spawning rate down to basically every 30 seconds, I think. Should be pretty good. So then I'm also playing with different ways of getting villagers up into the spawning cells. And each cell I need to seed with eight villagers. Two in each of these little side pods. Um, so these are just, these are completely normal. Um, but if I put two in each side pod here, they will breed up until there's uh, 16 of them. And uh, so I was just working with the ways of getting minecart up. And then you basically I'm going to build out this little temporary scaffolding. The minecart will fling around here, come up here. I then have to push them into the thing, break the minecart, that whole bit. Uh, but the... But the golems spawn up here and fall down and oh <laughs> that one's not designed right anyway uh as you can see i'm going off different designs this is this is my final design right here so i'm gonna be using a lot of sea lanterns um notice i don't have any lights down here I'm mostly going to be using stone because i have a lot of it going to be using this polished diorite um i think that's the diorite right i get it in the andesite confused i think everybody does andesite smooth andesite not diorite diorite's the white stuff and notice i don't put any lighting down here because it turns out you don't really have to um because the, none of this is spawnable so anything other than the iron golems i was concerned that stuff would be able to spawn up in here like if we have a zombie siege i think they might be able to but we only have 16 villagers so that's not enough to cause a zombie siege so and even if the zombies did whoops did uh spawn right here they can't get at these guys so i think i think it's pretty foolproof i've had this thing running in a variety of game modes and uh been afk at it for a long time and i think we're good I'm going to use a little spiral minecart tower, I think, instead of doing a long stair step like this, just because I think it'll be a lot easier. <coughs> I'm so sorry. Uh, um, so this means more glass. And I think one of the hermit, uh, one of the hermitcraft guys was building these, and it may have been a slip gator. I think it's slip gators. I'll have to look. Anyway, so he's been building spiral minecart tracks like this to go up distances, and uh, 
Doc had built one in his uh, world tour, one of his world tour videos, and he put the sea lanterns in, which is a nice touch. And so basically I can have it spiral up to a useful height. I'll start with the top ones probably, and then go, uh, go fill them with villagers. And then tear that down and go down to the next level and so on. Uh, we'll see. Okay, couple things to keep in mind. Notice the first couple ones I built, I used pack, packed ice on the floor. Like this. And uh, so that was like, you know, that seemed like any other mob trap. That's what you do. So, but I wasn't, it didn't necessarily seem... Oh, those guys are there. Like it was doing any good. So I did a little test. I created this little build, spot here where I've got one track that's all dirt, another track that's all packed ice. I made it three wide because I was initially trying to manually spawn in the golems, but then I set up some command blocks. So let's just line this up and go. Boop. And notice, same speed. The golems do not move any faster over the packed ice than they do over any other block. So no point in using packed ice on the floors of the, uh, the spawning pods. I then tried to use um, all sea lanterns, but sea lanterns are a weird block. They're not quite transparent, but they're not quite solid. Uh, they're kind of semi-transparent and it integrates problems. So uh, you have to use something like uh, stone. Uh, and if you put, and, I, and the biggest problem seemed to be that if you put, uh, if I put sea lanterns on this level, it prevented anything from spawning because I think it interfered with these doors. So, uh, so then that's why I went and tested, well, do I really need any lighting in here at all? And the answer turned out to be no. So that's all well and good. So then they fall down here. Now I've got these farther off the ground than they're going to be on the server. But then they have water streams that push them along. Just standard water streams. And then they get pushed over here to a little killing area. And they generate lots of iron. One problem I had was at the intersections here, I had a little problem where they would get stuck and they wouldn't move along. So I put this water in up above to sort of, like they would get stuck on these strips of ice here. Ignore those pistons. Ignore those pistons. Um, and so this then pushes them along if they get stuck on here. But then they got, I got into a position where if two golems from each direct one goal from each direction came to the intersection at the same time they would just get stuck and neither one of them would be able to push the other out of the way when another one came in the, in the same direction it would it would push extra and the golem in front of him would get pushed out along here but you'd end up with a point where you always had at least two golems that were stuck back here and i didn't want that because that's inefficiency where you don't really need it so I had a brilliant thought and I, I feel like such a genius for this. And I, this is probably probably not the first person to think of it. Uh, I was trying to use pistons to push them along down this path, but then I realized that the pistons don't really push them along. It won't push them around the corner, but what it does is it prevents them from coming from moving past here. So they'll come along here. And they'll get hung up behind this piston. So I've got them on a little hopper clock that periodically retracts one piston and then the other and one piston and then the other. And it acts like a traffic meter on a freeway on ramp. I don't know if, uh, if, you've, if you're familiar with the LA freeways, but they have little traffic, they have little stoplights at the end of on ramps. Okay, so here comes a guy. <coughs> and the idea is to sort of let the cars go through one at a time. So they put on these stoplights where you're supposed to stop, wait for it to turn green, and then one car goes, and then the rest all, you know, move up and wait. So we got two guys coming here, 
So I've got three here. So this is a common site. And they'll come up here. And they then they stop. And then this will retract. And let one guy through. Oh, perfect example. Perfect example. Let one guy through. And he moves along and goes along. And, and then this guy waits his turn. <laughs> and if you get two that hit the intersection at exactly the same time this prevents them from actually getting to the intersection at the same time it works perfectly i've not seen it jam up cause any problems and this is another thing i've seen when being pushed along by water these guys always face south which i think is an interesting little quirk so anyway um this pink wall here is just a spacer and i think Based on what the wiki is a little inconsistent on its uh, village mechanics article. Um, so these guys are 65 blocks apart. I don't think they need to be exactly that far. I think they can be a couple blocks shorter. But you know what? It's only a couple blocks. It's not that big of a deal. And vertically, uh, I think vertically they're, they're kind of at their minimum distance. And in fact, I built one originally. I think this one I built this guy one block lower and it screwed everything up so the the vertical spacing is very important so um yeah so i think that's uh so these little traffic meter things are going to be part of what i build on the server <laughs> i'm not going to include an, an off switch or anything they're just going to run all the time and i've put 16 items in the hopper clock which is a good good sort of rate and if you come down since here and sit and watch and listen in afk you'll see that it's a pretty constant stream of of golems i've been flying around so i'm probably interfering with it a little bit but um i think we're probably uh, i'm a couple of the spawning cells short on this side but uh, we're doing we probably will end up getting pretty close to that one golem every 30 seconds um, and I was playing with different trying to do different levels that's why I have two chests here and two sets of hoppers and they the hoppers feed down into the hoppers below so so anyway this is not that much afk time and it's quite a bit of iron uh, so that's that's all well and good so I think this is going to work out nicely just have to build it and then getting the villagers up into the cells is going to be the biggest pain of course so i will uh and my plan is i think i'm going to sink all this underground a little bit so as you we're i'm going to put the roof of this at ground level so basically i'm going to build this guy for this is what five blocks up so i'm going to build <laughs> the floor of the first one four blocks up probably and then this instead of being uh scene lanterns to light up the the inside of the track it's instead going to be um glass and then i'll put sea lanterns on the wall on the inside here shouldn't be a problem wait your turn there you go <laughs> oh boy so I have some prep work to do. Um, I have to move that village and I have to start building the, uh, the minecart apparatus. Oh, so he here's a good thing. I've got four guys coming incoming right now and they're all going to end up hitting the, uh, the lava blade at about the same time. It gets loud. That's why I'm not, I don't want to get closer. Uh, but yeah, so, so this works. And uh, this design, this is the design I'm going to use, I think. Lots of sea lanterns to make sure that things are lit up. Um, don't need any zombies spawning anywhere near up here on the walls or anything. I'm going to use chiseled stone bricks. And stone bricks for the vertical elements. And just stone and the andesite here to break it up and uh, a little bit of design it's not the greatest looking thing in the world but you know oh hello dude saw you falling see he's being pushed along he looks like he's trying to walk this way which would make sense he'd be walking against the water but 
these this, the guys coming this way are walking the same way and they don't turn when they hit the intersection so so anyway um i think that's uh this is a little preview of what what it's going to be i'm not going to build it out of yellow and red wool don't worry uh so yeah so there you go so that's going to take a little time to build um i'll record some of the building and maybe do a little uh, multi-episode tutorial type thing on how i build these cells they are the same cell arrangement that doc m was using on his uh on his tutorial so it's not you know i didn't do much to it other than arranging some of the things he puts lighting on the inside in that tutorial down here um which i found to be completely unnecessary so that's the uh that's the main thing um but i put the lighting up here to make sure nothing spawns up on top so there you have it uh killing lots of iron golems replace some of that iron that we've used in uh because the sorting system on the guardian farm that's a lot of iron so this hopefully will go good ways towards replacing all that and uh letting me then collect enough to start building the witch farm which i think will be the next thing up but uh anyway that's it um i will get started on that and give you progress updates as i do and uh let's see what else anything else oh yeah um on the uh the ms walk front uh so i don't know if you've ever seen it there's a show that on comedy central called broad city which is a freaking hilarious show uh you should watch it it's it's you know it's kind of lowbrow humor but it's really funny and it's uh two two girls trying to make their way in new york city and oh right turn this off trying to make their way in new york city and um and just having you know they're they're very different personality types and they do their they get on their little adventures and it's pretty funny uh one of the actors on that is uh abby jacobson i think is her real last name her character's name is abby on the show as well as as that's her name in real life so she did a little thing on it <coughs> sorry uh ms uh an ms fundraiser thing where she climbed the 66 floors of rockefeller center i guess about 1500 people did it um so that was that's a really cool little fundraiser idea i don't know how it how that got arranged i'm trying to find uh fundraising tools within the national ms society so i can put up a, a fundraiser box similar to the the child's play charity and extra life ones that uh you know that uh, you know good and uh good boulder fist and kurt j mac use so that uh i can set it up so people can donate directly to the national ms society for my little walkathon because i don't i don't i think people feel a little bit more secure about that than donating money to me and then trusting me to then donate it to the national ms society which i will and but of course then there's the tax implications and there's all that good stuff so if i can find a way of setting up one of those boxes and they had one for the climb to the top ms walk thing in new york um but uh, so i'm trying to contact the national ms society to say hey when i go to the sort of diy fundraiser thing when i click on start a new campaign it comes back and says your campaign that campaign is not active and it's like well i didn't search on any campaign i don't understand so so hopefully i can get that sorted out otherwise i'll, I'll have to do it through some sort of uh um either i'll just put up a thing and people can paypal me the money or i'll use uh gofundme has started doing not gofundme um indiegogo has started doing uh individual fundraising things and so i might use that um the money still ends up going to me but you know so i'd still have to you know go take that to the national ms society which i of course will do 
that's the whole point of this is to raise money for them but uh it'd be nice if people could just donate directly sort of in on my behalf so uh but this kind of reminded me of that uh, the rockefeller center 66 floors um as you can see Ooh. oh that's fascinating Oh, right, 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 right. Because the last one is powered rail, although it's not powered. Anyway, so, so that's, uh, this kind of reminded me of that. It also reminds me, of course, of the, the water elevator. On the one on Hermitcraft, uh, they do a water drop down the middle so you can get back down. But my plan would be send the villager up and then already have the thing connected over to the the uh the village that we're going to and i'd hop in a minecart and follow them but uh enough about that so that's uh this is what we're up to um i will next time we will start building and we will have some fun all right thank you for watching uh thank you for listening to me ramble about uh the broad city fundraiser thingy abby jacobson because i think that was that was very cool i don't know what her connection to ms is or if she was just trying to raise money for a good cause uh, but you know i love her all the same because she went out and climbed 66 floors of rockefeller center to raise money so i think that's pretty darn cool all right uh so i will see you next time and we will start building the iron farm for real all right, bye.